Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. We have been working on this kind of hard to find, but not, not incredibly rare, but lesser seen, lesser known, classic Bally Medusa pinball machine here. And uh, when we got it, someone had stored it under their house for quite a while. So of course it wasn't working, it wasn't doing anything. The lights weren't even turning on. So we have done several videos now of working through this thing and getting it uh, in the condition that you see it in now. It is uh, is really working good. I mean, the lights are at least. But uh, we haven't played it yet or anything. And one of the main things, the back glass isn't there. But guess what? The back glass was there when we picked it up. That's right. We have the original back glass uh, for this machine but it needs a little help so on this video we are going to get that back glass in better shape uh, so that we can reinstall it back in the game back where it belongs and put the little crowning piece back on this machine now it still needs the machine still needs a lot of work but uh, since the back glass is damaged and it's getting worse we got to do something about it so we're going to uh, we're going to start working on that and uh, let's go check it out this is the back glass. We've been holding on to it, protecting it, keeping it uh, safe from harm. <laughs> it's a really cool one. This thing on the bottom, you can't see it too good right now because I uh, I have to clean it up and everything, and we, we need to work on this paint that I'm talking about. But this is actually like a, like a golem-type creature or something, and you're looking at his back. So because it's separated from the... Uh, glass you can't tell as easily but as you can see it's a pretty presentable back glass especially the top part of it so we're going to fix this thing with the triple thick so I'm going to carefully take it in the back room and flip it over so you can see what's going on on the back okay so I've laid it down flat on its face the top portion is just fine nothing wrong with it at all it's all in the bottom you know five inches So what we need to do is to get that to lay flat again. Um, there's two big chunks that go here uh, that I have. So since I already have the painted pieces that have fallen off, um, this is pretty much uh, unique to Bally glasses that were made over the course of about three years. So from... Uh, let me think, what's the earliest one I've seen it do this on? From kind of like the Harlem Glo Globetrotters era. It's from like 79 to 81. The glass is made during that period. Something like that. Maybe, maybe a little bit later. I saw one on a um, rapid fire that we have, but I can't remember when rapid fire came out. So they changed their silk screening process at some point to where... Um, previous to that the, the way it would flake is little pieces would come off and that's kind of traditionally how back glasses flake um, but they got to they got some kind of new silk screening process where it started whenever you see a damaged one from back then that these big huge pieces will come off and the reason that it does that is because um, if it has extreme temperature changes so if you uh, Let's say you have this in a hot building, so like in your garage. Not not your garage at your house, because that's fairly air-conditioned, or it gets it's next to something air-conditioned. I mean like a storage shed out behind your house. So in the summer, during the day, it might get 100 degrees in there, and then at night, it's 60 degrees in there. So you get an extreme temperature change quickly, back and forth, and it makes this happen. So basically, the, the paint expands and moves at a different rate than the glass and I had somebody uh, whenever I talked about this before say glass doesn't hardly expand and contract at all that's in that's incorrect well you said doesn't hardly right so it does a little bit and the paint does a little more that's my whole point so that's what makes this actually peel off of the glass now the reason that it does it at the bottom 
uh, I've had other people point out is probably because of Windex. So that probably because people spraying uh, cleaner on the front, it comes down and it stays on this rail. Well, what that does is it makes this stuff leach it up a little bit. But that's not entirely what's going on because a lot of times the flaking will be right in the middle of the glass too. So um, it's more of this contraction thing that these all do. So on a, on a lot of games though, you'll get little flakes, but from this particular period, it's big chunks. So we're going to literally glue the stuff back on the glass with paint. Now this particular one is filthy. This thing wasn't stored good at all. It was in somebody's crawl space under their house. They had a bunch of cats. Uh, you know, who in the world knows? But we need to clean the glass a little bit first. I'm not even going to attempt to clean under the artwork that's still halfway attached. But I am going to try to clean that up just a little bit. But you have to be really careful. You see how this piece here has slid under the other piece? So, you know, if you just mess with that. Oh, it's just laying on top. So, I'm going to carefully try to get that off of the glass. And see if we can save it or if I'm about to break it. If you can figure out where it goes. Um, so I don't know where that one goes. But, uh, but I'm going to just get some Windex and a paper towel and very carefully try to clean that. Because if we glue our art back on, you're going to be able to see all of those... It looks like fingerprints or something, all that smudging from the front. So we want to get rid of, of as much of that as possible. And while I'm at it, I'm going to clean these windows too, because we're going to paint right over them. Okay, so I got it much cleaner. Now, I haven't even cleaned the other side, so some of that is on the other side. But all of this is not perfectly clean, but much cleaner. Uh, and I also cleaned all of that. Once you get up past about here, this thing's still very durable. Um, so I was able to clean all of that with Windex. Um, whenever it comes to just dirt on this area, you don't really have to get it perfect because it's going to make very little difference to how the thing looks in the game. Like if there's a little, you know, slightly more yellowed spot right there, you're not going to be able to tell from the front of the, of the glass because of all of the, the art, especially on one like this, that's really busy. It has a lot of stuff going on. Okay. So, but we've got it reasonably clean. Um, the only thing you really want to be careful with is the clear parts because, we're going to paint right over them. Some people tape that off. I don't like doing that because it leaves a little line whenever you take the tape back off. If you paint it and you get it uh, wet, which I'll show you here in a minute, whenever it dries, that thing's going to be crystal clear. You're not going to be able to tell that that has paint over it. And you're not trying to make this thing look perfect. You're trying to make it look presentable. After you paint that, no one's going to be able to tell that you painted over the clear part because you're using clear paint right so let me show you what we're actually going to be using on it okay this is the product that you want Krylon triple thick crystal clear glaze now they call this different stuff sometimes but there's the part number 0500 if you want some of this stuff you can order it on our website it's but it's in stores if you go to like Michaels they've got it but if you want some uh, go to lionsarcade.com it's on our parts page I have a link to it um, for people that like just clicking a button <laughs> now, if you, uh, we got a bunch of other stuff on our website. If there's anything on there that you order uh, off of Amazon, it gives us a little tip. Now, you can click the link and go to Amazon and order a Ferrari, and it still gives us a little tip. You don't have to order just the crystal clear glaze. <laughs> so we, we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. The reason it says triple thick is because it really is triple thick. This stuff, the, the common name of it uh, is triple thick. So uh, potters and people that, that do pottery and stuff, they just call it triple thick. And it, but it's a glaze. So uh, basically it gives you this kind of shiny finish, but the, the, what makes it so nice for back glasses is that it's really thick. So you're basically using it as a glue to hold this stuff in place. Now one of the questions that I get asked a lot too about this is, should I put it on a nice glass so that it doesn't get bad in the future? No, if you've got a glass that's in good condition, just leave it alone. You don't want to put anything on it that you don't necessarily know what the long-term um, effects are going to be. Now, people have been using this stuff. I didn't come up with this. People have been using this in the pinball community for 20, 25 years that I've seen. And typically, once it is on, it holds up well, right? I get glasses in from time to time where someone repaired them back in the day with tape or something, and that deteriorates over time, so that's not a good idea. Um, 
and you, you this is a situation where you kind of get one shot we're going to spray this on there and stick the, the the chips of paint back on if it doesn't work we're kind of screwed right if i was to tape it on we're kind of screwed because you can't take the tape off once i glue it on with this if it's a little crooked or something it ain't gonna get fixed right but it's on the guy's back like i said right so it's a good place for it to be because he's real ugly and if it don't look perfect oh well who cares so this this particular glass it's in pretty decent shape i mean it's in it's a pretty decent way, way to be screwed up now you get these areas like this where you just have cracks and if you look like right there it is it's still separated i mean it's up off of the glass so how do you lay that down you spray the hell out of it with this triple thick. That's how you do it. You try to get it all up under there. You're, it's like glue in a can, basically. It's not really glue. It's paint. But uh, it's like glue in a can. We're going to use it um, on all of this, all at the same time. And then we're going to put some weight on it to try to hold the paint down into the, I mean, the, uh, the loose paint chips down into the triple thick to act like a glue, almost to clamp it overnight okay so um i'm gonna go get the two little pieces and lay them out where i can kind of tell how they go but i can't put them on yet because once you get them on there i mean i don't want to break them any worse than they already are but um we're about ready to roll so here are my two little chunks that flaked all the way off they're still together but they're flimsy so I, you can try to lightly clean them because you know they've got dirt on them too but you're risking breaking them and I'd rather have it on there and look a little bit uh, splotchy than be on there and be missing <laughs> or not be on there and be missing uh, but there's my two pieces so at the risk of getting paint all over my camera I'm going to show you kind of a couple of the you know, if you're if you've spray painted stuff before and you're decent at it, I, you don't need any of the rest of this. But if you've never really spray painted anything, I'll show you just kind of basically how we're doing it. Since this stuff dries clear, you don't really have to worry too much about the thickness of the coat or any of that. We're basically pulling it up because we want it to be thick and like a glue. So these places down here where it's loose, the actual aerosol from the can can blow them off of the the uh, back glass. See how it's moving it? So you want to do just a little bit till you kind of weight, weight it down. So now it's heavier, doesn't move around as much. Now notice I'm getting overspray all over the windows. We don't worry about that yet. I also noticed that the I left the trim on even though it's rusted because it's just going to damage things worse if I try to take that off. Now I'm trying to just get this heavy as hell. It's actually running in spots uh, there around that big chip because I need it to get under the chip, right? You can even see that it's turning white in places because it's so thick. That's fine. We're gluing it, right? So we're, I mean, it's even actually runny, right? And we want it all over our area here that's, that we've got to put our chips back in. Boy, this stuff smells good. Take all your precautions that everybody uh, suggests. <laughs> Don't do what I'm doing, people. This is this is horrible. Don't do this. All right. So I've got it on there thick as crap, right? I mean, it's literally dripping. You would never paint spray paint anything like this, but it's clear. It's glue right so I'm gonna grab my pieces put the camera down and very carefully try to put them where they go and position them right in place okay people so see how I've carefully put them in right so I'm gonna hit it with a little more triple thick and then I'm gonna move up into these score w windows and I'll show you how I do that part up there here in a second but I got to do it pretty quick because um, it's drying every second okay so we made it past the hardest part so let me show you what I used so once you get it all wet you take saran wrap now I've had people say 
that overhead projector sheets may work better. That's probably correct, but I haven't ever used those, so I don't want to stop yet whenever I've got 140 feet of my uh, saran wrap left. Look, this is great value brand. That's probably Walmart brand or something. Might have got that at Winn-Dixie back in the day. Um, so you just you t you rip off a little piece of plastic wrap and put it down. Now the reason they're saying that overhead transparencies may work better is because you, whenever you do that, you get all of this, all the wrinkles. That's going to finish, that's going to be there permanently on the back of that glass. But it doesn't matter because it's the back of the glass, not the front of the glass. But if you took a transparency and cut it into pieces and then laid it down, that would work. Now why do you need this? It's so that you're basically putting a barrier down between the glue, I'm calling it glue, but it's paint, the triple thick, and whatever you put on top of it. So once you have that on there, you can touch the all the parts without getting it on your hands and move it around, right? So the, the point of that is, is by you put that down and then you put something flat on it to push it down into the paint and hopefully keep it there. Okay, so I've put in, I put a few uh, flat things on it here. And then I just put some paint cans and some stuff that has a little weight in it uh, so that it's pushing down on the paint. And then we're just going to let it dry. Maybe let it dry for a day. After it's done drying, you take all this off of it, and this uh, plastic wrap will just peel right off. Because it just the, the characteristics of it, it won't stick to the paint. And you'll see that here in a little bit. Okay, so I've done that, and I did the I did up past the score windows. Now, I didn't do them as thick, so they have pretty much dried already. So if you look and let the light hit it, you can see that it's clear. But there's a little bit of little bit of waviness, you know, whenever you look in like an old uh, an old piece of glass, how it has a waviness to it. But you can see where I stopped. See the line? That's your problem. So see this line that's glossy, and this line isn't. So the problem with the score windows is, if you stop painting like in the middle of the window, you will see that line. So let me show you what I'm talking about. You basically need to leave a wet edge past the score window. We're gonna do this one right here. It'll show you, it'll show you the whole thing, all right? So this is what you're trying to do. Now the reason I painted this too it's just, we're doing the whole glass, so why not, right? All right, so look how there is a line between the wet part and the dry part, and then in the middle there's this buffer. So if I was to do this, let's see if I can even do it. Okay, when that dries, you're going to see that. You're going to see all of that kind of like overspray in the middle, right? When that dries though, you're not going to see it because it's all wet. So you just want to make sure that the... So basically go around, paint your glass, and then the last thing you want to do, the very last thing you want to do, is this. So that it's all wet. Just make sure that the windows are wet and leave it and it'll, uh, it'll dry like that. Alright, so we've got it wet. We're going to let it dry overnight and then we'll come back uh, to borrow and see how it turned out. All right, folks, so I let it dry overnight. Now we're gonna peel off the, uh, the saran wrap. I've noticed that some of it didn't lie down completely, but hey, what can you do? Okay, so we got it all off. I didn't break the paint. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's all dry. Most of it is solid, but there's still a little bit, like just a couple little spots that aren't quite perfect like that. See how that's still moving a little bit? It's because we didn't get enough paint under it to where it was actually, there's nothing that it stuck to. And the same thing with this. Remember we were down here and remember I soaked all of this but I couldn't get it all the way up there where it, it was rippled, right? So it's kinda, it's an imperfect science folks, but I think it's gonna be alright. Now you may have noticed on the other side this lockdown thing is all rusty, but it's uh, steel so you can take um, uh, sandpaper and actually sand it. It might give it a little bit of a grained look, but it'll be just fine. So that's what we're going to do. Um, once you've done this, it's pretty solid now. It's not going to fall off. 
you saw how it was earlier. Right? Now, not all of it is because this piece ain't quite right yet. But much better than it was. Uh, this is the two pieces that were off of the game that had fallen off. That piece right there and that piece. Now, you may also notice that there are cracks. That's because the size of the artwork has changed over the years. So it's shrunk or expanded. I guess it's shrunk. That's why there's cracks. Uh, so every one of those places, the light's going to shine through. So you can touch that up. So what I might do is take, uh, uh, you know, once I turn it back over and see what color the guy is, I can take some touch-up paint and paint the cracks so that they're not as noticeable. Any place that's dark gray like this, the, it's, the light is completely blocked from. So when this back glass illuminates, this will never lighten up. That's why they painted the gray on there. It's a light. It's like a mask. Okay, The tilt will light up, but this part will never get light. So if you paint paint on this, you'll see the paint through the front, but you don't have to worry about it being too uh, dark or too light or any of that. It may be too light because the light will go through it, but you can actually paint it. Like, let's say this guy's blue. You paint this blue and then paint black over the back of it. And from the front, all you will see is the blue, and the black will block the paint, the light from shining through it. So uh, it's a lot simpler to to touch up something in this area than it is something in this area. Now, if this this is a face, if that had fallen off, and you put it back, and there was a crack right here, you could touch that up, but you would see that crack. You would see that line in the artwork. So it's an imperfect. Uh, um, you know, it's, it's art, basically. You're trying to... <laughs> you're, you're painting. And it's not perfect. It's like Bob Ross said. There's happy little accidents everywhere. And if you ain't down with Bob Ross, I will have no disrespect to Bob Ross in my presence. Alright, folks. So that's how it came out. I think it looks pretty good. Now, all of the trouble is down there in the guy's back. So I'll turn off the lights. Interestingly enough, the pop bumpers kind of reflect on his back. I guess it depends on how tall you are. Like my eyes are up here. <laughs> A lot of people's eyes are down here. Hmm. Okay, let me turn off the lights. Let's see how it looks uh, a little darker. I think it looks really good. It flaked in about the best possible place. It's literally on the guy's back where he's like a big ugly creature anyway. And you can't even... I mean, you can tell if you're very familiar with it. And if you keep looking at it, you'll figure it out. But I think it looks pretty good. Now, you can see that where it doesn't actually stick back down. Like, see there? That is where it didn't stick down. That's a wrinkle in it. This area is you're looking at the actual paint that glued it. And from here to here is the wrinkle that didn't glue down higher up. So it's, you know, it's definitely not perfect. But it won't get any worse, so we saved it. So I like that. Thing is starting to come together, don't you think? Look at the lights on the back thing. I cleaned that up. Got it looking a lot better. We'll call that the kit bar. You know what that means. It looks like kit's talking to you. Okay. So since we're doing cosmetic stuff, I think the next thing I'll do is clean up the cabinet a little bit. It's just... Uh, needs a little work. So let me clean it up. I'm just literally going to wipe it down with like 409 on a paper towel. Um... And I need to work on cleaning up this coin door a little bit. Okay. So, uh, let's see how presentable we can get this thing. Okay, so we were able to get all the glue residue off of it and clean it up. Looks a lot better. Put a new sticker on it. I still, uh, this doesn't look quite right, but cleaned off the sides. I always use a magic eraser on the sides, but it leaves this kind of haze on it. So after that, you have to clean it off two or three more times to get it where it doesn't have the haze on it. Eh, it's looking pretty decent. 
This side is actually a little better. What a cool looking game though. Phew. Phew. <laughs> uh, printed apron cards, kind of drew, pulled that together. Okay, so next thing up, um, since we're doing cosmetics, right? One of the drop targets is missing. So let's go ahead and swap that in, I got one. All right, so here is that big assembly. So the way we're gonna change it is, uh, we're gonna take this plate off the bottom first. So I took out the one that's broke and I also took out the one that uh, was in the middle because whenever you get a new drop target, it's never the same exact color. So the, so the white doesn't look like the other ones. So if you're only going to replace one, put it in the middle or something so it looks, at least looks like it's supposed to be like this. <laughs> or you can replace them all. But, you know, I'm a fan of the uh, wabi-sabi movement. So uh, I'm going to pop it in, and uh, we'll see how that goes. But, they're, you know, it's simple to see how they work. There is a bar that pushes them up, and then as it gets hit, this spring on here pulls them down. It's not working great right now because uh, we have it upside down, but you get the point. Um, so if you've got a wide bank, it's pretty easy to just take that plate off and change them uh, on, on a bally. It's different on each one. But on some of them, you have to take this plate loose too. With, this has all the switches on it. You just can't see it right now. Um, but we'll swap them in and see how it looks from the top with one of them being the wrong color. Okay, so I put it back together. Now, one thing you gotta check whenever you're doing this. You've gotta make it where everything will pivot. So you've got to check all of it. So see how I'm able to spin that bar? There's no resistance really. I put a little oil on it anyway to clean it up. But, right? And then on this particular one, these were seized. These little, um, the little washers here that go through this part. Okay, so it would move, but it just wasn't moving very good. And then same thing on this side. Of course, this just runs all the way through. These little, the little clips here were seized, just because they're rust and dirt and all of that. So if that, if you get a problem with any of these pivots, what'll happen is this thing will be able to pull in, but whenever it releases, it won't go back down. So gravity actually makes it go back down. So you want it to be able to freely move in and out of the coils, all right? Or else it won't move right and score right and all that stuff. So I'm swapping the flipper bats and I just noticed, this type of stuff that you don't notice till you mess with it a little bit. This one has a linear plunger on it. So this pulls through the hole and just goes straight back. I actually really like these. I've heard people that don't like them. but And then this one has more of the old style, which is also the new style. So it's got a plunger with a, uh, a uh, link on it. Why would they do that? That's kind of weird. Um, so this is the original end piece. See the hole? where the plunger goes through on this one. And uh, they have, uh, it looks like all you need to do to change it, it looks like, is change the paw to the older style and change the plunger to the older style and use a uh, plunger spring instead of the extension spring. A compression spring instead of the extension spring. I don't know folks we're gonna play it we'll see how it plays like that but <laughs> the things that have been done to some of these machines you run into stuff and you go why in the world would I do that but that's what they chose to do this the coil is the same they use they're using the same exact coil on each flipper so I guess we'll get a good uh, example of which which flipper is better will the left be stronger or will the right be stronger Hmm. All right, folks. So that's where we're at with some of the cosmetic stuff. Got the sweet flipper bats on there. Man, that's cool. And 
You didn't really think I was going to replace this one of them. Come, come on, people. Come, come on now. You can't, people. You can't do the old ones are brittle. You can't, you can't do that, people. It won't work. Come on now, people. You knew, you knew better than that. Come on now. Okay, so uh, it's starting to look like a pinball machine. Fantastic. I don't think it'll start yet, though, will it? We haven't fixed it yet, have we? Oh, put. Look, when you hit the flippers, the lights go off. <laughs> Boy, what a shot. Look, it closed the zipper flippers. Get it. Hit it. Look, they're not dropping all the way, though. We still got plenty of things to do here, people. We still got plenty of things to fix. See how they're not dropping all the way? And then we lost it. So it's not playing right. You can't, it's not, we haven't got it doing its thing yet. It's just kind of. Look, it's stuck on ball and play one. It's not there yet, but we're getting there little by little by little, okay? So I think the back glass turned out nice. I like the little red flippers. I think the drop targets look good, but they're not working right. The cabinet cleaned up pretty well. So we're getting there. I think this is video number five we've done on this machine. It's a very complex machine, has a lot going on, and needs a lot of work, you know. So we're slowly bringing it back, slowly bringing it back. So we'll do another video where we work through it a little more. And we still have to do the video on the soundboard. We have a replacement soundboard from a gentleman that's going to be awesome. And we're going to do a whole video about just the sound. So uh, that's coming up. But on the next video, we'll work through it a little bit more and try to fix some of the stuff that's not working right. So... Or we, we may have to do the sound first so that we can tell, like, what is it doing right now? Is it trying to score things, or is it just playing background music, or does it sound like the game's in it? Who, who knows, right? So we still have other videos to do. So we'll see you on the next one. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. We didn't have to do all that. We're just doing this out of the kindness of our heart. Uh, so we appreciate everybody watching. If you want to know how you can support the channel, there is a link down below to Amazon. If you're going to buy anything on Amazon, use our link to go to Amazon. Simple as that. You don't sign up for anything or anything. Uh, and it remembers that we sent you there, and it gives us a tip because we advertised and sent you to Amazon. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. Uh, we also have links to a lot of the things that we use in our repair videos on our website. Go to lionsarcade.com, and there is a parts page on there uh, with a bunch of links. Same deal. A lot of them go to Amazon. Uh, and last but not least, don't forget to check out my brother Donnie. My brother has his own channel here on YouTube, and he's just as entertaining as we are. So we, uh, I'm usually over there with him on that channel. So uh, we appreciate everybody that's been hanging out with us, and we will see you on the next video. I really think she's starting to get there.